And then we're going to put in 16 mystical pink petals. And then we're going to toss in a seed. And there we go. And that gives us a Vasky's head. And Hello and welcome to another episode of Regrowth Reloaded. Okay, so today I want to um, do a poll. Um, we've been doing, you know, a little bit of this and a little bit of that here and there. And I want to kind of see where you guys think we should head to um, very soon. Um, our options are going to be, we're going to work on more magic because we've still got quite a bit of witchery to do. We still haven't even gotten into Thongcraft. And I don't think we're anywhere near ready to get into blood magic yet. So there's a lot of magic in this pack. We can get into more of the technical stuff. There's a, a lot of um, things that we can do. Um, I don't know what all quests are available to us, but we can start digging more into those. Or we can start on the ever popular bees, uh, which I'm not looking forward to. But it, we're going to have to do it eventually. So if you guys want me to start on that, um, then let me know. Uh, there will be a poll, hopefully up in the upper right-hand corner of this screen. So please uh, check on that and uh, make your selection and let me know. And uh, we'll get things planned out for the future episodes. Okay, so let's get started. We are going to be doing a bunch of stuff in witchery today, um, as well as getting some more, one more set of seeds here um, so we're going to come out of here and we're going to start off in chapter 7 what the world is built from we're going to come up here so if you remember we managed to open up the certus quartz seed so we got certus certification uh, you recall an elusive crystal which has its primary usage in computing and data storage maybe it's time you try obtaining some okay so we need to get our Essence of Certus Quartz. And this is going to get, um, uh, require 64 blocks of redstone, 64 light blue powder, floral powder, uh, 16 extreme essence, 32 essence of diamond, and 32 essence of emerald. Thankfully, we have farms and we can get all of this stuff really easy. So we have it right here. We have our redstone, light floral blue powder, extreme essence, essence of diamond, and essence of emerald. So let's go ahead and come in here. Let's do a manual submit and claim our reward. We get our essence of Certus Quartz. So we can come up here now and we can go into Certus Seeds. You don't even need to think about making seeds anymore. Now that you've managed to get some of its essence, you should make a seed to produce Certus Quartz. So, let's take a look at the recipe of Certus Quartz. And this is four Extreme Essence, a Rune of Gluttony, Rune of Pride, Rune of Greed, Rune of Lust, a ingot of Refined Steel, a Block of Manulin, a Block of Osmium, one essence of Certus Quartz and an essence seed. So we have all of that stuff right here. Let me go ahead and clear out my inventory here a little bit so we can get all this stuff in here. That is that, 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 those four essence seeds and our four runes. And that one. So let's come over to our altar and get this stuff going. So, Certus Essence, Osmium Block, Block of Manulin, Refined Steel, Four Extreme Essence, Essence Seeds, Rune of Gluttony, Rune of Lust, Rune of Greed, and a Rune of Pride. All right, this is going to take a little bit, so I'll be right back with you as soon as it is ready. All right, our altar is ready. Let's go ahead and get this on here and get it on. And there we go. We have Certus Quartz Seeds. I'm going to get all of my 
I hope so. Anyways, uh, yeah, it's just seeing if I got all my runes. That one, that one, and that one. There we go. Service Court Seeds, and let's go ahead and get our book out and claim our reward. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take the Extreme Essence, and there we go. And that looks like it's everything on this page. I don't know if it, okay, that's all what the world is built from, all quests complete. And Chapter 2 is also all complete now, too. Cool. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is I want to um, start getting some stuff ready for our witchery altar. Now, we set up the altar in the last episode, and I've done a little bit of work out there, and I'll show you that in a moment um, as far as uh, getting the area prepped up so that we can um, get some um, energy for our, uh, our altar. So, first thing that we want to do is we want to make things that go on the altar and these are things that help increase the power of the altar and one of the most um, one of the uh, most uh, highest rated things is a player skull uh, now there is a recipe I believe where let's see let's see I think it's a uh, skull uh, let's see if we come in here. Yeah, head. Now, um, we can craft a skull, I believe. Maybe not. I know in older versions that, that you could, then it was, you know, a bunch of stuff that you could put in there to create a head. Another way you can do it is, of course, cheat one in using commands. But another way that I found is to actually use our um, petal apothecary so let me go ahead and get a bucket of water and we're just going to grab that put that in our petal apothecary and then we're going to put in 16 mystical pink petals and then we're going to toss in a seed and there we go. And that gives us a Vasky's head. And Vasky is the mod author. So quick and easy way to get, I think it's a good 3,000 altar power. So <laughs> you definitely do that if, you, if you're going to be doing anything with Witchery and Britannia. That's a quick and easy way to get a player skull to use in the game. All right. So. Let's uh, get a few more things going. Next thing we want to do is we're going to come into chapter 10. I'm on 10, how the world grows. And we're going to come over here to for a rainy day. Getting sick of carrying around all those poppets? Well, no longer as you think you've found a way to let them work their magic without being in your pocket. A puppet shelf constructed with attuned stones can channel the tag lock over distance, allowing the puppets to activate under normal conditions. It's the sort of thing you might wish to keep safe, though. Uh, you want to do that because if, if you're playing on a multiplayer server and people get a hold of your uh, find your puppet shelf, well, then they get a hold of your puppets and they can do nasty things to you. You don't want that, but. We're playing on single player world. We are okay. So we're going to do a puppet shelf. So let's take a look at the recipe. That is four attuned stones, four nether bricks, and one piece of green wool. So we've got the green wool, we got the nether bricks, and we've got the attuned stones. So let's go ahead and get that crafted real quick. There, 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 and there with the attuned stones there with the bricks and that that gives us our poppet shelf and I believe that gives us yeah that gives us a death protection poppet fantastic all right so the next one we're going to do is we're going to come up here to where are we going to go at which one do we want to do 
uh, oh, augmented attunement. We're going to come here first. While the altar can channel some natural magics by itself, it is much more capable if augmented by various natural apparatus which act as foci, which are more attuned to these magics. Chalices will boost the power that the altar can hold while lights such as the candelabra boost the rate at which the altar will charge up this power. Other foci include pentacles, skulls, and arthanas. So we've got the skull and it's going to give us the skeleton skull. So we're going to look at the candelabra first. Let's take a look at that. That is three iron ingots and a tombstone and three torches. So let's come over here. So we have the attuned stone, the three iron ingots and the three torches. All right. So it was, I believe it was like this. These three across the top. Yes, there's our candelabra. Next thing is the chalice. Let's take a look at the recipe on that. That is four nuggets, four gold nuggets, two gold ingots, and an attuned stone. Over here we got the two gold nuggets, four gold, uh, two gold ingots, four gold nuggets, and an attuned stone. So let's come over here. Like that and that. Tune. That goes up there, these two here, and there's our chalice. All right, and that gives us a skeleton skull, which we don't need. We can make as many of those as we want, but we got it anyways. And you could put that on the altar as well. All right, so that is everything that we're going to make. No, there's one more thing we're going to make for the altar itself, but we'll do that in just a moment. Um, let's do the this one here, distilled sunshine, not really. Crafting a distillery will allow you to distill fumes and other items to create more potent fumes and better refined materials. It requires natural power supplied by an altar to run. So, we're going to create a distillery. We're going to get 64 clay jars and either gas tears or more clay jars. We'll just choose clay jars because we got all the gas tears we'll ever need. So, let's take a look at this. This is two clay jars, four iron ingots, two gold ingots, and an attuned stone. And yes, I made a whole, whole bunch of attuned stones just because I wanted to get all of these things prepared for us. So, see if I can remember this attuned stone here, it's gold here, here, like that, and these two here, and there's our distillery. Okay, and let's go ahead and, oh, we got a detection task. Combining quicklime with foul fume will produce a distillate oil of vitriol with gypsum and slime as byproducts. So it wants us to make an oil of vitriol. I will come back to that later because um, we, we have to set this up out by our um, altar. So uh, let me... Um, Mark that down in my notes and I'll be right back. All right, so we'll do the oil of vitriol once we get out by our altar. I just want to finish these other uh, tasks here that we have. So the next thing we want to do is put the kettle on, would you? Okay, and this is, you've been brewing potions and casting spells with your cauldron, but you feel this, that a small kettle which can channel magics through an attuned stone will be much better suited to creating magical brews for more advanced witchcraft. So it wants us to make a kettle. So let's take a look at the kettle. It is a cauldron, an attuned stone, three string, and two sticks. Okay, those are empty, so oh, it's over here. There we go, cauldron, a tune stone, three string, two sticks. So we had the cauldron, tune stone, three strings, two sticks. Yeah, we got our kettle. All right, does this open up another one? No, we get um, five water bottles and 10 glass bottles out of that. So this is the way to brew potions in witchery. Uh, the cauldron is used for other things, not really potions. 
All right, yeah, and that wants us to do a, a dream potion, which we will do at some other point. Um, next we're going to do is um, you spin me right round. Witches wear some pretty stylish robes. You tried to buy some from your local coven witch, but they insisted that you make your own. Do you think that you're going to need a spinning wheel? Why not go the full hog and make a magical one that will use power from an altar to do the spinning itself? Manual labor is for chumps. Okay, and this is going to give us eight whiffs of magic, and we're going to craft a spinning wheel. Let's take a look at that. This one is four item frames, a block of wool. Looks like it needs to be white wool. Uh, a stick, two planks, and an attuned stone. So let me get this stuff out of the way. All right, so four item frames. Stick, wool, and two planks. Let's see if I can remember this one. The item frames are like this. Wool, stick, two plank. Oh, that was an attuned stone. Yep, you need that too. There we go. One spinning wheel. All right, and that's going to give us eight whiffs of magic. All right, so that's opened up um, this here, the witch's robes, which we will do at some other time. I will have to pull the stuff together so that we can get that going. Um, so that's it for in here. The next thing I want to do is going to be another item that's going to go on our altar, and that is called an Arthana. Arthana, which is a small ceremonial dagger which is made from one gold ingot, two gold nuggets, an emerald, and a stick. So, let's go ahead and get these out. So there's a gold ingot, two gold nuggets, an emerald, and a stick. So, there, there, these two, and this, and that will give us our Arthana. Now the Arthana can be used like any other weapon and it can also be enchanted. Um, and these are used to give you a better chance, you know, when you're killing a creeper to get a creeper heart. We don't need to worry about that anymore since we have unlimited supply of creeper hearts now. But it does add power to our altar. All right, give me a moment to get this cleaned up a bit and I'll be right back with you. All right, I got some of my uh, inventory cleaned up a bit. I uh, probably need to do a little bit more. But you can see I'm up here in the bedroom of the house. And the reason we're going to do that is we're going to use the tag lock kits that we created in the last episode. And what we need to do that is we need to do this so that we can bind the poppets to us. And, and in order to do that, you would right click the tag lock kits on your bed. And that way... You can see here it says bound to Desert Rat 65. So those are my three tag locks. Now I want to take these and I'm going to bind them to the poppets. So if we look at the poppets right now, you see it says not bound. And now it's bound to me. And the reason you want to do that is so that, you know, you're going to put them on the poppet shelf. And if you die, or whatever happens, you know, like in this one, this is death protection. If you die, the poppet will will do its job because it's bound to you and you won't die after all. I think the poppet gets destroyed, but uh, at least you survive through it. Same thing with the fire protection and water protection. So we've got our poppets. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to put them on the poppet shelf. And I'm just going to stick the poppet shelf up here in my attic and if you guys haven't seen this in a while I did get the last of the records so I have the entire collection of them uh, kind of set up an area here uh, with some potion shelves and these are just the potions that have either been brewing or ones that are dropped by witches in our mob farm and then I created a sword pedestal for our um, man of steel store 
but I'm just going to put this down over here in the corner. So let's get our poppet shelf out. Get our poppets down here. Put it down and then we're just going to right click it and put our poppets on the poppet shelf. So it looks like you can hold nine poppets in total. I don't know how many different um, protections there are, but uh, that's, that's that and it just stays in here and um, if something happens to us then one of the poppets will take effect. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to head over to our altar and I want to show you what I've done over there. So, oh, and I planted our Certus Quartz. It's at 111, so give it some time. We'll have lots of Certus Quartz in the near future. Now you can see here that I have been bone milling the area up quite a bit. I planted uh, several more trees. And the reason for this is to bring up the base level of our altar. Um, let me show you before I show you that, if we come around behind the, the uh, altar where the, the tree here, I've got a trap door, we can come down here and I've got another area that I have filled up with some plant life. So we've got, you know, uh, the witchery plants, you know, the glint weed and the ember moss. We've got some botania flowers. We've got the pumpkins and the melons that were given to us. I also have um, skulls. I have wither skeleton skulls, uh, uh, creeper, zombies, regular skeleton. All these things help build up the um, power of your altar. Um, and the altar is like directly above here. So it can read all of this and add to it and we could actually dig up the ceiling a little bit more and maybe put a bunch of uh, you know um, leaves and logs and things like that up there too to help boost the power of our altar but I just added in tons and tons of trees around here and whatnot and here's our altar with absolutely nothing on it if we right click on it we have an altar power of 2,000 154. It was a little over a thousand, I think, when we placed it originally. Um, and that was just with the few trees and whatnot that we had around here. So you can see that by adding your wildlife around it, it increases it significantly. So 2,154. Let's go ahead and place Vasky's skull on here and see what we get out of that. And shift click. There we go. And now if we look at it, 8,616. Wow. All right, let's uh, try a few other things. Let's try our chalice. We're gonna ahead and put that over here. Shift click. That brings it up to 10,770. Uh, let's try the candelabra. Set that in the center. Still 10,770. I think that one just um, refreshes the amount of time it takes. Now the chalice too, we can boost that a little bit more by putting redstone soup in there, uh, which is something that we're going to have to do at some point. Let's see. What else do we have here? We have our Arthana. So let's go ahead and place that. I'll just set it down here. And we're still at 10,770. So I think that just like um, boosts the range uh, at which this thing can read. So we're doing pretty good. There's a few more things I could probably put like a, you know, wither skeleton skull up here. We can put a pinnacle up here. I don't know what all else we can put. You know, you can put regular torches on here, things that will help boost this. All right, is it nighttime already? All right, let me go sleep real quick. I'll be right back with you and we'll finish setting up a few things out here. All right, so let's uh, look at the other things that we have here. We have our spinning wheel, our kettle, and our distillery. So let's um, get these put down. So. 
They have to be within range of the altar. These things draw their power from the altar. And I still need to um, clear this area up a little bit and do something here um, to protect this because the kettle also requires fire. I'm just gonna set it down for the moment and I'm gonna have to um, set it up a little later on um, and, and probably put some stone around this so that we're not catching things on fire and hopefully it's far enough away from that tree. Uh, we might need to move it out a little bit further. Last thing I wanna do is burn down my willow tree. All right, so there's our kettle, our cauldron. Uh, let's uh, put down our, let's see, maybe we'll put our uh, distillery over here. Let's try that, there we go. And we should be able to right click on this and I did not grab any clay jars. I put them all away. Uh, silly me. Okay, and um, then we'll put the spinning wheel down uh, about right here. There we go. All right, so let me go grab some clay jars and I will show you what other things I've done around here. So. I just grabbed a bunch of different trees. So we got the spruce, we got our, of course, our birch. This is that blue tree that, um, I remember what it was called, um, dark wood. Uh, this is the tiger wood. Um, I, what else do we have here? And of course, those are the witchery trees. This is a ghost wood tree. We've got the sakura. Um, and then over here, I planted the, um, the bald cypress I told you about that I cut I grew one of these by mistake and it was like 200 and some odd blocks when I cut it down but it's a pretty tree I liked it so I went and went ahead and planted one out here and then over here I planted that okay did he die did he fall come on go away Okay, if you recall, I talked about the rainbow eucalyptus and how ugly this tree was. And here it is in all its gory details. I, You might like it. I just, to me, it looks like, you know, it's got rainbow cake sprinkles all over it. It's not a pretty wood to work with. I really wouldn't know what to do with it. I can't think of anything I'd want to use a bunch of blue wood for. So, I mean, I think I, the stuff that I had, I think I used mostly for making charcoal. I might have used it for making, um, you know, sticks for torches or stuff like that, that where you're not going to make planks and stuff out of that blue wood. So over here, I just kind of went crazy with um, the bone meal. I tried it in this area and saw the grass kind of comes out looking you know that ugly color because of the the, the eerie biome but the flowers kind of stand out quite a bit over here anyways that's uh kind of what i did there i did some more work just recently with uh, finishing up the front of this mountain getting it covered with dirt using our rod of the shifting crust still got a lot of work to do because there's way too much cracked sand all right, let me run and grab these um, clay jars and I'll be right back with you. All right, so I went and I got our clay jars. Let's just go ahead and put them in here. And then remember, we're going to be making this oil of vitriol to complete that quest. So let's look, take a look at the um, recipe again for that. And that is a foul fume, quick lime, and clay jars in a distillery. And that will give us gypsum, oil of vitriol, and a slime ball. So we've got plenty of foul fumes. Those are, uh, you get those from a lot of different saplings burning them. Quick lime is just wood ash in crafting. So we, I've got a piece of wood ash. Let's go ahead and do that. Now we have quick lime. We've got some foul fume here. So let's go ahead and put that in here. There's our foul fume, quick lime, empty bottles. Give it a moment and we will have our oil of vitriol okay it's almost done 
and there we go we got some gypsum a slime ball and an oil of vitriol so let's go ahead and get our quest book back out make sure that we got that completed here and that was the distilled sunshine there we go yes we get um, 64 more clay jars and then we can either get more gas tears or more clay jars let's take the clay jars because we're going to be actually using this distillery quite often so it saves us time in making all of those so it opened up a couple of the things this is something's going to be necessary for us soon the uh, guard tree uh, let me take a look at this real quick uh, this is making tree fit seeds let me see what we need for this we need the tannis extremis which we haven't done yet um, Reek of Misfortune, Mandrake Root, Water Artichoke, Amber Moss, and Tear of the Goddess. So I'll have to get prepped for those um, so that we can do this. The tree fit seeds get used later on. If we take a look at the uses, um, one of them is to create a great wood sapling, which we are going to need to get started in Thomcraft. And it's also used to create a silver wood sapling, which is also used in Thomcraft. And it can also be planted, and then you get these little tree fits that run around and attack things for you. Um, but they also attack your livestock, so be careful if you use them. Don't, don't, don't use them around your cows and pigs and sheep and stuff like that, because it will kill them. All right, well, that's it for this episode. Um, be sure you vote in the poll, um, and if you can, if not, put something in the comments below. Let me know what you want to do, whether we're going to move in and do more magic whether we're going to start doing a little more technical or whether we're going to start bees so until next time this is desert rat have a good one goodbye